speaker yeah that is fine that you can do 620 no issue uh, 630 we will start we have okay. started youtube live also so okay. if your students join sometimes okay. there is too much rush in joining so many people keep coming so okay. that creates some time a problem but then okay you are their computer expert and we from our end there will not be any issue don't bother okay 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 thanks okay ma'am Uh, good evening all uh, we will wait for some time for the students and teachers to join and 
whenever you feel convenient you can start from your end madam and then after your introductory part is over i will take over and we will start the session so now it's completely up to you when to start you can start as per your convenience okay thank you okay okay sir okay sir Uh, vidya miss good evening uh, yes ma'am ah okay okay but i think they see the uh, audio of the slide is not heard audio is not there okay. yeah i can uh, see only the slide <clears throat> हेलो दक्षिणा गुड इवनिंग विद्या आई थिंक ऑडियो इज नॉट हर्ड विद्या
Good evening. I am Santosh Takle. If uh, everything is ready, you may please start. Good evening, sir. Good evening, madam. <coughs> sir, we'll start. It's uh, six thirty. Yes. We'll start, sir. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Okay, Vidya. <coughs> yes, this yes, must. I have to stop okay. sharing. Uh, miss, shall I start? Uh, okay, okay, you start, Sakshina. Once a disciple asked Sri Narayana Guru, is it true that the universe is based on the thousand heads of the serpent Ananta? And Guru replied with a smile, the universe is based on Ananta, which is infinite. Namaste and very warm greetings to one and all present here. Even centuries back, scientists and philosophers have been learning about the vast expanse of the universe and discovering the beauty of the cosmos. And that hasn't ended even today. In this 21st century, researchers and astronomers have been making revelations and diving deep into the science beyond the Earth. In today's age of science, technology and innovation, the relevance of the topic has raised up, especially among the youngest generation of society, as they are the ones that can contribute to a sustainable and inclusive development for tomorrow. Developing a scientific temperament plays a major role in equipping children with the skills and habits necessary to make informed decisions and to contribute positively to the society. It also enables an individual to perceive things in the light of facts 
and make better decisions. Hence today, on this wonderful evening, in order to enlighten our minds with knowledge, with his knowledge about science and universe, we have Santosh Takale, senior scientist at Baba Atomic Research Center, Mumbai. As a nuclear scientist, science communicator, and social activist, he has addressed all corners of India about lectures of scientific temper with 2,600 plus sessions at 974 venues. His aim has been to achieve universal brotherhood and world peace by spreading the light of knowledge and to affix the roots of scientific temper among the masses. Before we begin today's program, let us invoke the blessings of God Almighty through prayer. Vidya. Or we'll go with a silent prayer. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Now, in order to welcome the gathering, I invite Prarthana Prashant for the welcome address. Namaste and a warm welcome to all distinguished participants of today's enlightening webinar. Our virtual stage is graced by a luminary whose dedication and selfless contributions have ignited a flame of knowledge and social progress across our nation. Senior scientist, Mr. Santosh Thakle. Hailing from the esteemed Baba Atomic Research Center, BARC Mumbai, and with a background in mechanical engineering, Mr. Santosh Thakle has transcended his professional realm to become a beacon of inspiration. Through his unyielding commitment, he has embarked on a remarkable journey of social betterment. Today, we gather to honor and learn from a true visionary. Mr. Tuckley's achievements are as diverse as they are impactful. The following are just a few. 
scientific temperament and social awareness, guidance for aspirants, youth empowerment, skill development and entrepreneurship, nature conservation and literacy. These glimpses into his multifaceted endeavors paint a picture of a visionary dedicated to shaping a better world through education, compassion, and progressive action. We are greatly privileged to have Mr. Santosh Thakle as our esteemed host for today's webinar. His wisdom and insights will undoubtedly enrich our understanding of the universe and inspire us to contribute positively to society. It is with immense pleasure that I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also welcome our esteemed principal, Sri K. Suresh, whose exemplary leadership shapes our path of excellence. I extend a heartfelt welcome to our Vice Principal, Srimati Jyoti P, and Assistant Vice Principal, Srimati Jyotin Mai, whose support fuels our journey. A warm welcome to all our beloved teachers and parents present here today. Last but not least, a hearty welcome to all students, eager minds ready to embark on a journey of discovery as we dive deep into the vast and fascinating world of science with the guidance of Mr. Santosh Thakle. I extend my warmest welcome once again to each and every one of you. Without further ado, I hand over the virtual podium to Santosh, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. For just convenience, I will always keep my camera off so that it doesn't interfere with the actual speech. <clears throat> now let's come to the very important part of today's lecture, initial formality of saying thank you. It's really wonderful that you have accepted my request to arrange or organize this particular lecture and that too with such a wonderful introduction, prayer. So thank you very much, respectable teachers, then respected parents in case anybody is present. And of course, I am thankful and good evening to the students who all are present here. Today's lecture, as I said, it's about the vast and fascinating universe. And really speaking, covering something about universe in 45 minutes or 50 minutes is impossible task. But then nothing wrong in attempting to get something out of nothing or something out of so many things so that at least we can initiate the discussion. At this particular era of internet and so much of the information technology, the basically everybody knows most of the things, but sometimes real crux to be made known to particular age is of a essential importance. So in that reference, I'm actually going around the world or at least throughout the India to make people understand that this particular topic may be of utmost importance to the nation, mankind, humanity, but more important than the countries like India, where there are very less understanding of certain facts, but more understanding or beliefs on some misbeliefs and misconceptions. So without wasting much time, as we have got into the presentation, I will just give me a second, we will start. And this session will continue as far as the one-way session is concerned, may, may I, uh, uh, with your permission, I will take out permission from everybody to put on his mic or his video or anything. Anything to be communicated, I have already given one number to the Lakshmi Madam. And so you can communicate there. But after 45 minutes, we will open up the session. We'll have question answer by text messaging. And then we can continue for another 15-20 minutes as per your convenience. As I have already come from back from office, so I have sufficient time for you as you have already taken a lot of interest and many people are present here as well as on YouTube live. So let's get into the today's discussion. Just give me a second to the adjust my presentation. We are going to have brief journey of universe. So obviously we cannot travel with a motorcycle or car or some bus. We need to have that particular mechanism which is actually competent, eligible to do the space voyages. So I have chosen one system. It would have been interactive session. If I would have been present in your school, then I would have asked you one question. 
please tell me what is this system call and what is the weight of this system. So you would have answered very plainly and easily, every one of you, including even fourth, fifth standard student, that this is a space shuttle system. Then second question comes, which may be little tricky or difficult. What may be the weight of this particular system at a present world scenario? So there you may have little problem. Then I would have not stopped you on that question and answered which you may may not be knowing. I would have taken to the some other part which I am actually interested in addressing. I am asking you to wait because I want to talk about topic. So let's ask you a simple thing. I will ask you one simple question. What is the weight of motorcycle? Suppose by chance you have given responsibility to take care of motorcycle when mommy daddy has gone to market in parking area. Then probably that motorcycle fell down because of some problem and you are trying to get it back on the road single-handedly. You know it is difficult. What is the weight of motorcycle? 100, 200, 300 kg motorcycle cannot be lifted single-handedly by individual or student of age 10 to 15 years. So why I'm asking you weight of the space shuttle system is space shuttle system weighs approximately 6 lakhs, sometimes 10 lakhs, sometimes 12 lakhs, sometimes 30 lakhs. This space shuttle system, suppose it's similar to the Discovery or Columbia, then that space shuttle is 72 to 75,000 kilogram. SRB, solid rocket booster is approximately 6 to 7 lakhs kilogram and then that Fuel tank with oxidizer is approximately 8 lakhs kilogram. The whole system weight shown here may be around 21 lakhs kilogram. What the space shuttle system does? It goes to the skies, does manned or unmanned mission. In some scenario, it launches space probe, artificial satellite. And this artificial satellite help us in having better communication by means of a mobile Having better entertainment by means of a satellite TV network. Having better living conditions by precise weather prediction. Furthermore, safety security of individual family is important. But the safety security of nation is at most important. And whenever somebody from neighborhood troubles us, we do sometime military surgical strikes, some surveillance. All this surveillance are assisted by the spy camera situated or placed on the space probes launched by our own country. So all these things which are miracle, just 10, 15, 20, maybe 100, 200 years back are happening in a, some developing country with so much diversity because today's launching or today of the space shuttle system or technological achievement or heart transplant or trying attempt to do the head transplant all these things are the human beings mental ability reflection so launching of space shuttle or similar thing is not the representation of your physical strength but it's a representation of your mental ability and that is why we go to school when we say kids need to be very sincere need to be very disciplined need to be very sanskari okay then expectation is future, they are going to shape the community, shape the nation, shape the humanity. So in sabko madad karne ke liye aap school jate ho, to school jane ke baad, waha pe ek important kaam hota hai, your mental ability improves. Student who goes 15 years to the school, gets some graduation degree with father's money, is of no use unless until he applies his own brain, does some great hard work and then shapes him with so much of great knowledge that he builds not only knowledge domain, but he builds his character. And that's the real definition of education as per Swami Vivekananda. Okay. So, Charitra Nirman hi shiksha ka pramukh karya hai. That means character building is the main function of education is said by the Swami Vivekananda and that is what we will try to achieve in this scientific era in the next 45 minutes. So this is the space shuttle system you have understood well that really really it is important to study hard in your school college time even after that because once you get habitual to certain things you will not leave that. Nowadays also 
after being senior scientist, I at least study, read, write, understand the things for 12 to 15 hours a day. So next, we'll go to the simple things. You must understand how to think and not what to think. Most of the time I give this example, suppose you are going to some good, bad, whatever, maybe, maybe playing cricket match and suddenly some cat intercepts your way. Then some people will say, let's go back for two feet, three feet. Somebody will say, let's not go and play. There is something bad is going to happen. All these things are falling into the category. What to think after happening certain thing. If you talk about the how to think, then how to think is a very simple understanding based on the scientific evidence. And that understanding itself is called scientific temper. So you may be getting bored seeing after this four or five line sense. I will not be talking about that. This is YouTube live. So video will be available with you permanently. That time you read this and try to understand these four or five sentences in reference to next 45 minutes talk, which I'm going to cover. But very important, small thing I wanted to address is scientific temper in short. It helps you to make informed choices in life. Like, suppose today somebody is in 10th and now he is trying to become engineer or doctor or some architect because just somebody told him. But he loves some art or he loves some other things which he is so good that everybody appreciates, but everybody is running behind engineering medical. So he is also forced to do that. So in that case, in future, he may face some problem. But suppose in that situation, he does proper studies of what is his first preference of liking? What is his second preference of liking? What is his third preference? And similarly, he put up case to his parents, his well-wishers, teachers, some free uh, guides like me. And we all senior members of decision-making body come to, to you. So this is well-studied, hard, hard work and informed choice made by that student in life. Suddenly somebody told and you are following some path is uninformed or in immature, infatuated choice which makes life little miserable. So scientific thinking, evidence-based thinking is not about only science. It's about life. Second part, this scientific evidence-based thinking is supported by Indian Constitution Clause number 51 AH says it's a fundamental duty of every Indian citizen to inculcate, foster, promote the thinking which I am going to elaborate for the next 40-50 minutes. Let's go further. After having so much importance to the scientific temperament, many people do not follow this because whatever we have been told since our childhood, we are normally inclined to do that and that is why such an important thinking is missing not only in our people or our Indian people, it's missing all over the world. Scientific temperament is missing after people use day in and out science and technology for their routine to some critical activity. Heart transplant is not happening in any religious place. Your space shuttle launching is not happening in any religious place. Good education is not coming from that place, it's coming from some good academic institution. And in such cases, if you start talking about scientific temperament, people will start misguiding or misdirecting or giving some extra unnecessary opinion to you because of the childhood sanskar they have received. So it's time to get into the bit history and understand how this science, scientific thinking has come into the existence and finally it has conquered the mind of few stalwarts so that we have reached to the 21st century where everybody has got most of the technological achievement benefits. What is it? Let's get into 400 years back from now. Who's this gentleman? I know, you all know. He is Mr. Galilei Galileo, called father of modern observational astronomy. This gentleman or this scientist has used that small telescope of 2 centimeter, means 20 millimeter diameter. And after using that small telescope, what he observed, let us discuss that for a few minutes. What you are seeing in slide, I know. You have already told that Galileo has seen such a type of moon phase with crater on the moon surface with his small telescope. Very nice. What is below this moon? Can you see some twinkling object? So just tell me what is it. You will say what is big in this? This is some star. So I take you to the further slide and I'll ask you what is this? Then you will say, so these are the phases of moon. And the, here I may I would like to correct some people who have given previous answer like me. 
No. What you have seen previously is a moon with a crater and phase pattern. Perfect. Second one, a twinkling star-like object is not star. It's the Venus planet, which normally you see after sunset in a sky and before sunrise in a sky, depending on which side it is available, depending on its elongation. These terms are not temporarily important to you. Galileo tried to observe Venus with his telescope and some similar pattern he has observed in a Venus also. Venus also got phase pattern. This is a recent photograph, but Galileo also observed similar thing. When Galileo moved on to the observation of Jupiter, he observed that four some sparkling points are going around the Jupiter. He was not very clear what is it. He presently, you know, these are the four main moons of the Jupiter, Io, Europa, Ganymede and Thales. Ganymede being the biggest natural satellite in a solar system. Then Galileo moved on to the Saturn. And he observed some ring-like structure, which he was not clear. But he was observing some anomalies in so-called uniformly available universe as per religious books. Further, he moved on and observed the sunspot on the sun. And finally, he proved the Copernicus heliocentric model. Now, you just tell me one small thing. Suppose in this next three months exam or next six months exam, you get 99%. So, or on at least 97% or at least 90%. Then teachers, parents, family members will give you gifts or will give you some penalty. Aapko takleeb denge, shiksha denge ki bakshish denge. And you all know with good achievements, people appreciate you. Galileo has done so many uh, achievements and so many <coughs> observations <coughs> 400 years back. You must be expecting he must be given so many awards, honors, but no. Galileo was put into the jail for last 16 years of his life. Last five years, he was almost blind. And then also nobody thought or bothered giving any appreciation to him. <coughs> Throughout his lifetime and after that also. Because whatever Galileo was telling was based on the observation-based scientific evidences which is not much in line with the religious thinking of that time in that particular geographic location. Abhi, you tell me, if this bad things have happened with the Galileo, did the things change as per the so-called religious fanatics? No. Satya hamesha hi jitta hai satya mein vajayte. So that satya truth has prevailed and now it has come to the level from science, matlab gyan, Vigyan, Tantra Gyan, technology. And today you talk about pen, mobile phone, laptop, mixer grinder, microwave. Anything you use at home is not been previously used by the big people like Raja Maharaja, Chhatrapati is nobody. So what you are doing and observing today is based on the previous people's scientific thinking and their hard work to make our life easy, whatever it may be. So if this is the story of the fight by the, our ancestors, then let's get into the basic history of universe to understand how this whole universe has come up with so many miraculous things and so many superstitions. You know this. You Many of you must have already talked that. Sir, please don't explain this. We know that the origin of universe is very nicely explained with the scientific evidences called fundamental Big Bang. So you know the Big Bang explains the origin of universe in a scientific way and such a small or big but such a type of energy source has given existence to whole of universe. Now just tell me one small thing. Your school or your residential premises adjacent to that there may be some small mountain range and you want to put up some big telescope peak observatory there. So you want to remove that mountain and set up that plateau so that you can have some buildings, observatory and so many other things. Government has given permission, but who will remove complete mountain? So you got some earth moving machines, but those earth moving machines are not going to remove that mountain in the next 10, 15 or 6 months. It's going to be ta taking too much long time. So you called your best friend called Mr. Doremon and Doremon in a fraction of a second removed complete mountain with his capabilities will hold it here. 
Yes, tell me. They have no Raymond is a science fiction character. He can do so many things. Some logic has been put, but not the complete scientific temper or scientific thinking is there. But presently, you just tell me. If in present scenario, moving out complete mountain is impossible. If Doraemon can convert whole mountain into a tennis ball, it is okay. It is science fiction. But present human machinery cannot convert complete mountain to the tennis ball. Then I am not telling about you the mountain range adjacent to your school. Neither I am talking about Maharashtra, India, Earth, solar system. I am talking about everything in this universe has originated from such or similar energy source. It is highly unbelievable for you people to believe. And there is nothing wrong in this. So, if certain things in science and technology are a bit complicated, they demand little detailed study. And that is why we study for 15 years of life to get some certificate called graduation. Don't run behind that certificate. Run behind the hard work expected, discipline expected, and the knowledge level expected. And very importantly, the thinking. If I'll ask you what is the age of universe, then you will find it here. If you don't find it here, I will take you to the next question. Here, obviously, you will find the age of universe. So now you all have noted down it in your notebook that it is 13.7 or 13.8 billion years. So how many zeros will be given on this 13.8? Approximately. No, exactly nine. So, 13.8 billion years is a quite huge number. And to trace back this number, I'll be taking you into the history, mythology, astronomy with some time machine imaginatively. So, let's go back. Suppose I go approximately 75 years plus some days, I'll be seeing that India is getting independence. Nowadays, everybody wants to do engineering, medical, and so many hi fi education, but the independence is concerned. The major contribution was from the very, very layman people who had got tremendous honesty and love for the nation. So today that is somewhere missing. But then you want country to really be developed. You need to be honest and disciplined and hardworking. Some people, most of them were BA, BCom. And those people have come up with a extremely good in-depth knowledge while it's Savidan, that is constitution. So, today's date, our understanding and misunderstanding the different discipline of education need to be removed. If we go, instead of only 75, 175 years from now, no class, most of the time physical class, but some physical classes were running and those were only for the gents, boys. 175 years back, there was no female student going to school and there was no existing such facility. So somebody worked hard. To get the school the girls into the schools, and if I'll you ask you what is the name, then many of you may be may not be able to recollect. And here is some photographs based on that the woman's education, the story of India's first school. Just to make you aware, one 1848 when Savitri Bai Phule Jyotiba Phule started girls' school, they have been troubled more than Galileo. But today. If we are proud of Kalpana Chawla, Kiran Bedi and so many females working day in and out for the development of nation and mankind, the contribution goes to the initiator who is Phule family. So 175 years, we had social reformers. We should remember them because they have actually done so good to the India that India, after 75 years of independence, is much, much, much ahead of those countries who have separated from us in the name of some religion or some other thing. So this credit goes to the education and the foresight of our ancestor. Let's go further. If I'll say you that suppose 175 years back we had a uh, fully family, 350 years back and previous to that we had great, great kings like Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and these all people were working for humanity irrespective of religion. If anybody has got any doubt, you can put my lecture on these stalwarts and I will in-depth explain you that how these people were fighting for the good cause and for the downtrodden, not for some religion. Okay, anyway, we'll go further. If I go 600 years from now and I go to Punjab, I'll meet Guru Govind Singh, Guru Nanak Ji. They were also, also fighting against injustice. Now, suppose I go back 1400 years from now and go to Mecca, Medina, I'll see Muhammad Paigambar sahab, and he was also uniting people and making them 
helping them and guiding them to live peaceful life and that is why islam is called religion of peace if you go 2000 years back and go to jerusalem you will meet jesus christ and jesus christ was also doing the same thing that telling people that love all serve all and don't trouble anybody if you cross the zero that is if you go into the bc and go around 260 years beyond zero that is 2260 to 80 years from now you will find that samrat ashok after waging the kalinga war near bhubaneswar around area was after bloodshed and victory also was telling people please follow ahimsa and that is why he converted to some good very important religion which was actually initiated by gautam buddha just 250 200 years before him so if you go 2300 years from now you will find chandragupta maurya and alexander the great porus if you go 2400 years from now you will find pythagoras and people if you go 2600 from years from now you will see gautam buddha and mahavir jain tirthankars most of the religions have come almost we have close to if you go beyond that then we find very important that is the civilization and the flourishing civilization of indian subcontinent so if i go back 3800 years i'll see people ancient people are writing vedas and vedas are not only full of the rituals and philosophy they are full of mathematics and astronomy and that is some thing called vedanga jyotish so vedanga jyotish is the evidence that in vedas period approximately 3800 4000 years from now also we had people stalwarts who were knowing mathematics and astronomy separate lecture can be taken on this let's go further if i go back 5000 years from now you will see that our ancestors were so civilized that they had houses toilet bathroom separate entities well planned cities called mohenjodaro and harappa if i go by this speed probably will to close after 1100 years so let's go further and speed up if i have reached up to 5000 year now i will multiply it by directly 100 so we go 5 lakhs year from now 5 lakhs year from now if i go and visit maharashtra's buldhana district alona lonar tehsil and i will see that 5 lakhs 550000 years before there was some meteoritic impact and some beautiful crater has been formed and this is that lonar lake any of us are busy in visiting religious places so we don't find to go to the science time to go to science center we don't find time to go to the such important sites adjacent to this lonar lake we have ajanta elora cave adjacent to that area we have very famous devgiri fort so very important thing is all youngsters need to be taken to the historical places forts museums snake park science centers and then only they will be able to build the future india which will be sparkling star in eye of the humanity bolne se kuch nahi hota hai bhashan se to narashan milta hai na kuch aur milta hai but people don't understand this that's where somewhere we have to work hard so i just won 5.5 lakhs here now i'll ask you what is the next then all of you will say sir we all remember that up before the 5.5 lakh saal there was something which we keep observing in a discovery and some movies called mr dinosaur 20 crore years back in cycle of evolution dinosaur got into the existence and approximately for your kind in the 6.5 crore years back 65 million years back dinosaurs got extinct the difference if you calculate it will come 1350 lakhs 1350 lakh saal that is the huge time domain in which dinosaurs were existing on earth surface you may ask me why am I, i am telling you this because human beings are existing from their old ancient form since last 50 60 lakhs years now you just tell me what is bigger number 13 50 lakhs or 50 60 lakhs and obviously 13 50 lakhs but in whole life span of 13 50 lakhs years of existence dinosaur did not come up with any idea of religion and religious places and then also they existed for some such a long period it makes us think on a very important point whether the religion are for human beings or human beings are for religion think over this then we will go further if somebody asked you 
that suppose these dinosaurs are there from 20 lakhs, 20 crore years, then from where they came, they came on our surface, Earth is approximately 460 crore years old with sun. And this 460 crore year old Earth sun came from the this universe energy source 1380 crore years. In the whole of this process, you will not find single thing which is connected to supernatural. It's all energy flow. There is no bhut, pishachad, iron, nothing. No witchcraft, nothing. But all over the world, people believe in such nonsensical things because human beings are afraid of certain things which they don't have any explanation in the past. explanation so Let's not get into this. We will go into something interesting. Somebody may ask you, because you have stopped at a dinosaur and dinosaur has come into the existence because of the solar system. And somebody may ask you, what is exactly the origin of solar system? And all of you know, sun is a giant ball of hydrogen. I am a nuclear scientist working for some very important national cause. The nuclear is related to the nucleus of atom which talks or which gives energy by two means called nuclear fission reaction nuclear fusion reaction. If you talk about the controlled nuclear fusion reaction, nuclear reactor are the best example and related technology are actually supporting mankind and there are thousands of peaceful uses of the nuclear science and technology. That separate lecture can be taken. But now suppose you talk about the other part of it that is nuclear fusion, then sun is a good example of nuclear fusion and this nuclear fusion energy source if you compare with your LPG cylinder, the mechanism may be different, but energy source comparison, LPG cylinder is a 14 to 15 kg and it can cook 4 or 5 people's food for the 3 months. Now, sun does not use LPG, it uses hydrogen, runs on a fusion reaction, but it does not use 14 15 kg of hydrogen for 2-3 months. It uses 600 billion kilogram of hydrogen in a second and converts it to the helium, whatever left over mass get extinct, converts, gets converted into the energy and that energy reaches the Earth's surface after traveling 15 crore kilometers and the effect you will see both ways. First effect we will see, which is little on a lighter note. So, if you go to Kashmir, you will find so fair skin people. If you go to the middle of the, like Maharashtra, little darker version people, you go to the West Indies, you will find people so dark that you will feel like this is gone. So, aapko, whatever differences you are seeing is only because of the sun. How much we receive? You will be shocked to know. 1500 watts approximately per square meter is the energy received on Earth's surface because of the energy emitted from the sun, which is located at 15 crore kilometers. And what is the wattage of our tube light? 40 watt, fan 40 watt. Nowadays, new bulbs come at 7, 6 watt and they illuminate whole of the room. So just imagine, this conversion is not been mastered well and that is why we have positive of uh, energy. So energy banane ke liye, technology chahiye, technology ke liye dimaag chahiye aur dimaag ke liye dimaag ko Mazboot banane ke liye school college mein bachchon ko dil se padna chahi. So if you do that, it will help you a lot. But people don't understand technology, mechanism and science behind sun and the its origin. What they believe is this whole mass which has gathered to form sun has expelled some less than 1% volume or mass to form something called planets and asteroids and comets. And as per the some foolish people, this comet, this asteroid, this planet, they come and affect your health, they affect your future, they affect your everything. How do they affect? Then they will tell you some nonsensical stories which are absolutely baseless and non-scientific. But we will get into the something very interesting which is inspirational to me. I know you all respect Swami Vivekananda and that is why 12 January is celebrated as a National Youth Day. Then Swami Vivekananda said a very important thing that you need not wear any tavis, you need not wear any anguti, you need not do any religious ritual just to please somebody and to make some good fortune and good effect because human beings are the architect of their own destiny. Insan uske bhagya ka khud vidhata hai. So let us prove it by example. 
some 80 90 years back some kid like you was in rameshwaram nearby area and trying hard to support his family by selling newspaper but trying hard to have good future by working hard in school did bsc then did engineering then went for the pilot selection because it was his main interest and could not get selected so after rejection he did not choose to be terrorist neither he blamed his father mother or ecology or government neither he did anything wrong to his own life he worked hard got selected into the drdo but after joining government organization he did not do single mistake which normally government people do including in indulging themselves into the laziness indulging into the wrong practices he kept on working hard some day he's been called missile man india my man of india then he has been chosen as a chief scientific advisor then became the president of india but the sanskar which his parents and religious people including all his previous generation has given to him made him so simple and person with simple living and high thinking that he went into the rashtrapati bhavan with two bags and he came out with two bags without making some extra money for himself such a great person dr apj kalam is inspiration for all of us whenever we talk about apj we always feel inspired and we work hard but any time we get second thought that what was his religion what was his caste what was his complexion how beautiful he was no then why we keep discussing such things in diverse nation called india and why we keep busy ourselves and uh, in making look us beautiful and handsome your beauty lies in your thought process and your character which is built by the good education and good sanskar so parents and students and teacher if you want to build the good nation work hard on your kids as a uh, your own kid or others kid that is what i do in my life but that is not to be told today because today we have sufficient material to discuss some other lecture you can ask me a doubts on that next so this is the story of sun so many things can be told about diameter how big it is how it got formed what all the processes it is happening but i'll not get into that we'll go into the very interesting this slide depicts the vastness matlab size of the sun which is 13.92 lakhs kilometer diameter compared to the others here also you can see but we'll not get into this slide i already mentioned you now let's come to the one misconception which people keep following and keep discussing many of the people have misunderstanding suppose earth got existence from the sun and from where such a beautiful handsome human beings have come into onto this earth without supernatural support so you all know mr darwin he has roamed around five to six years all over globe to understand the changes in the space is happening and come up with a very important scientific theory called evolution which says that the probably monkeys or apes may be the ancestors of human being now you may have doubt which is very important that if monkeys are our originator then why the monkeys in the forest or apes in the forest are not getting transformed into the human being put up some cage and put some 10 20 monkeys feed him with pizza make some shampoo but uh, jacuzzi for him but in 6 months he will not see that his all hair has fallen or in next 6 months he has his uh, tail has vanished and in another 6 month he comes up and says bhaiya bhaiya mujhe bhi pant shirt de do mujhe school jana hai that doesn't happen so we are talking about evolution not revolution revolution takes lakhs thousands crores of year and it has to have his gestation period and if, if we understand and respect that opinion let's view at apes have given transform or uh, evolved to human beings and from where the hell ape must have come ape must have come similar species like uh, mammals or something or species with a back backbone if you go back to the fragment question comes from where living beings came from the non living the answer is water so you may ask from where water has come now this water from where it has come multiple theories exist but one theory is that it must have come from the meteorite comets which has had full of ice banks so from where ice has come water so from where water came ice so this is not that murgi pehle ke anda this is very simple theory ice and water and uh, vapor are same thing that is h2o and h2o has got two ingredients h and o and h got produced into the big bang form some stars and the stars during its initiation that is protostar during its running that is the main sequence operation and during its death called supernova hypernova reaction they give rise to 
the products of the fusion reaction cycle called the elements. And these elements, when they combine somewhere, hydrogen, oxygen combine to give water by some methodology came to earth. And there, after so many years of reactions, geothermal ages, and other things, it has come to this form where amino acids got generated and from there we got the living beings and from living beings evolution we got some species like this 40 50 60 lakhs year before this species was not having some big body like dinosaur neither they had some big claws like a lion neither they could fly like birds neither they could swim or stay under water so what they would have done is, instead of using physical strength, they started using their other limb called head. And in head, starting from the cortex or brain stem to the frontal lobe, evolution happened because of the working continuously. So by working continuously and continuously on your muscles, you build muscles, bicep, triceps, chest. Similarly, by working continuously with the mental thinking, you build good thinking and good Brain. So, ye brain ka IQ bhi badta hai. Mehenat se badta hai. Success bhi milta hai mehenat se or planning se. So, those who are good at planning will never fail. If that is correct, then this particular species, 5,000, 6,000 years back, built houses, started doing something called agriculture. And for that, some calculation of day in a day night is required. So, they started taking help from the celestial sky with the stars and constellations. Same species started working on reducing friction. So wheels got invented. Same species wanted heat. So they started controlling the fire. Same species wanted to have some automation. So 200 years back, they invented the machines. And these same species wanted extreme high level of sophistication in their operations with some distant operation. So they invented computer and telecommunication. And then they wanted everything in their hands, so they invented the mobile. Human beings are working for human beings. So our first duty is to respect human beings. First comes parents, second comes teachers, third comes our well-wishers, elders, fourth comes our friends. Friends are very but a friend is very friend you not like friend. So stay away from such nuisance elements of society by understanding what is, what is nuisance to the society. So if this is the story of this human being, then now we have already taken over 40 minutes and still left with another 10 minutes. So I go with some very important understanding. But before that, conclusive remark on the first part of the lecture was respect human beings and human beings have done this great technological development because of the natural resources. So conserve and protect natural resources. Save water, save food, wherever and whenever possible. Try to avoid misusing the natural resources. How and what? We will take some separate lecture. So today we go into the misconceptions related to the unnecessary wearing some gadgets pertaining to some planets and other things and making feel that it is affecting your future. It does not affect, but let's do it scientifically. What we have four eleven uh, uh, pictures shown are the Mercury diameter 4,880 kilometers, Venus 12,000. Earth 12,750, Mars maybe around 6,000. And you start wearing some rings, that is in the name of this, by Newton's gravitation, then you have to wear something else for this. Because Uranus Neptune can accommodate some 20, 30 years, 20, 40. Saturn can accommodate 750 years. Jupiter can accommodate 1300 Earth. So you start wearing some rings, that of them, then you are, you will get your hands and your Now let's go further. You go to go and see the sun. Sun can accommodate 10 lakh Earths. So probably you have to wear tractor tire in your head and then probably move around because that is how people treat their that so-called auspicious anguti and tavi. But let's not get into this. You know, night time, whatever we observe are the stars we and planets. If you talk about uh, stars, how many stars we can see in a night sky? And many of you will say, infinite, uncountable, all incorrect. In night time, maximum, we can observe five to 6,000 stars with the best sky condition with our naked eye. Ha, at a time, half sky is visible, so around 2,500. City like Bangalore, Mumbai cannot even see 50 stars because of the light and other related pollution. 
So suppose five six thousand stars exist exist in the night sky. As such, there are billions billions of stars. But whatever we see, let's compare their sizes. You see, thirteen hundred Earth accommodating Jupiter is so small. Ten lakhs Earth accommodating Sun is so small in term in front of the Sirius, which is the brightest star of the night. But if you see that star, it is like a small point pointing, little little bigger compared to the others. But this full uh, Sirius. Can get accommodated in Pollux two three times, but Pollux is even smaller version than Sirius because of the distance. If you talk about the Sothi, Sothi can accommodate plenty of them. Now go further. Here you see Sothi, Arcturus, Arcturus. At least ten fifteen Arcturus can go in Rajendra. Similar in Rohini, some few thousands in the Betelgeuse and few lakhs in Antares. Now just imagine. I am talking about ten, twelve stars, which are so big in size. Now, just imagine, I am talking about billions, billions of stars. So, so, if you talk about these stars, and these, you want to observe them by telescope, probably you have to call me or you have to arrange telescope. Let's go further. These all stars stay in a one village called Milky Way galaxy. मतलब हमारी sorry हिंदी word है दीर्घी का English में बोलते हैं galaxy. तो ये जो हमारी मिल्की वे गैलेक्सी की रिंग है उसका ब्लू लाइन जो है वो बाउंड्री है इमेजिनरी अंदर जो गोला गोला दिख रहा है सफेद दैट्स बेसिकली द क्लस्टर ऑफ स्टार सिस्टम्स यू मे बी सींग समथिंग कॉल्ड सन हियर बट दैट इज नॉट सन दैट इज द लोकेशन ऑफ सोलार सिस्टम जस्ट टू पॉइंट आउट द लोकेशन ऑफ सोलार सिस्टम वी आर पॉइंटिंग इट्स नॉट सो बिग इट इज नॉट इवन विजिबल इन दिस पैटर्न So what I'm trying to tell you now, I'm telling to trying to tell you vastness of the universe. So what I'm trying to do, I'm going to measure the diameter of Milky Way galaxy in which there are billions of billions of stars. How many? Maybe around hundred to two hundred billion star system. So suppose I will take motorcycle and start going from one diametrical point to the other diametrical point in this blue circle. Probably motorcycle will run at a forty to sixty kilometers per hour. Take car, it will go hundred. Take train, it will go one twenty, one thirty. Take uh, spacecraft, uh, aeroplane. It will go thousand fifteen hundred per hour. If you take spacecraft, it will go sixty five thousand kilometers per hour. Means sixteen to seventeen kilometers per second. Means going around Earth, space shuttle will take approximately forty five to fifty minutes. But there is something else which moves faster than the space shuttle. That is light, which moves at a tremendous speed of three lakhs kilometer per second. कहां पे 17.5 किलोमीटर पर सेकंड और कहां पे 3 लाख किलोमीटर पर सेकंड सो 3 लाख किलोमीटर पर सेकंड इज अ क्वाइट बिगर नंबर एंड इफ आई टेक दैट एज अ मोड ऑफ ट्रैवल और ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इफ आई विल आस्क यू विद अ स्पीड ऑफ 3 लाख किलोमीटर पर सेकंड हाउ मच टाइम लाइट विल टेक टू क्रॉस दिस ब्लू सर्कल डायमेट्रिकली देन द प्रीवियस आंसर्स रिसीव्ड वर 5 मिनट्स 5 आवर्स 5 मंथ्स 5 इयर्स And all were wrong because the light, with its tremendous speed, takes one lakh year to cross this galaxy. One lakh light year means in kilometer one lakh into three sixty five into twenty four into sixty into sixty into three lakhs, and that's the huge distance which we are now stretching our mind to understand. But is there is the only one galaxy? No, this is the Milky Way galaxy, our own home galaxy. Then there is one adjacent galaxy called Andromeda galaxy. This galaxy has got two hundred plus billion star systems. The diameter is not one lakh light year. Diameter is one lakh eighty thousand light years. So now you may ask: So two galaxies exist only? No. See this picture. Every point is a galaxy. You may ask, sir. हमको हमारा galaxy दिखाइए. So I will try to. Just tell you the imaginative two points which represent our galaxy. Let's get into this. I'm zooming in. Just imagine that these are the two points. One smaller one is a Milky Way. Bigger one is Andromeda. Milky Way galaxy has got diameter of one lakh light year. Andromeda galaxy has got diameter of one lakh eighty thousand light year. And the distance between these two adjacent galaxies is a twenty-two lakhs light year. So I will now zoom out. Just to tell you what we were seeing, imagine, just for you were better understand. Just see one two adjacent neighboring points having twenty two lakhs of light year distance between them. This whole picture is showing three thousand plus galaxy. 
you may ask me how much portion of sky is this particular picture then just imagine you are holding one rupee coin in your hand hand stretched one eye closed and one rupee coin is actually hiding some small portion of sky and that small portion of sky is been zoomed by the hubble space telescope for the 24 hour exposure and that small portion of sky has revealed some 3000 plus galaxy so if small portion of sky which is just behind one two rupees five rupees coin is hiding 3000 galaxy then how many galaxies are there in a whole sky the whole sky has got 100 billion plus galaxies so you may say that is the whole of universe then i will say no rajanikanth ka picture mein entry abhi baki that entry or climax of the hero is basically 100 billion plus galaxy is a 5% visible matter of this universe 95% matter of this universe is a dark matter and dark energy dark matter is the black hole related thing dark energy is the energy which is expanding this universe and that's the vastness of this universe this whole things have understood by human beings by just using his brain and the natural resources and that is why this whole lecture you are almost 50 minutes of life i have taken and the intention was the only please 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 respect all human beings which are honest disciplined hard working okay irrespective of their caste religion language respect every human being work for the nation building and conserve and protect the natural resources there are lot many other things like we can have identification of pole star using polar uh, a big dipper or sharmista that is cassiopeia constellation we can have studies about the orion the hunter we can talk about the orion nebula which is a stellar nursery we can see the andromeda galaxy which is located at 22 lakhs year with a naked eye we can see this is andromeda galaxy which is this is the zoomed version previous one this is now we go into the closer version then this is the point yellow spot the location is the m31 this is the actual andromeda galaxy if you see the binocular this is the zoomed version and now very important why i am making so many efforts with my own money time to inculcate scientific thinking without swagyanic soch or scientific thinking so much population populous nation matlab hamare desh mein duniya ki 18% population rehti hai then also our research contribution to the world is almost tending to near by 1% less than 1% in such scenario, if you want to maintain our state or if you want to achieve the status of developed country and compete with some troubling country, then we nearly really need to work hard day in and out with some strong thinking, which is scientific evidence-based. We cannot waste our time, natural resources and money on natural resources, uh, on ritual, uh, religious rit rituals. We cannot fight in the name of religion for just satisfying somebody's political intentions we have to work hard for building nation and for building nation it need not be of any uh, need not be of any specific political agenda you need to work hard with your own studies you need to work hard with your own job or your own business you need to work hard by maintaining honesty is the best policy in every behavior if you do that sky observation part we will do later this is my contact point, which is always open for you to do WhatsApp messaging. So this was the big part of today's lecture. And really speaking, I have run a little fast only because actually I wanted to make you feel that universe is tremendously vast. And understanding the universe without scientific temper is something like a getting into some great ocean without knowing swimming. So if you want to sail through this big universe with valuable time spending in your lifespan then probably not only education but understanding the complete universe and human life with scientific thinking evidence-based thinking and valuable usage of your time money everything for the humanity and nature is essential that is of course my interest i hope it matches with your interest 
before closing i would like to again once again thank all of your management school representative respected teacher student friends who have attended this session one more important thing after allowing me to deliver this lecture obviously i have some responsibilities to and that is one complete content of this lecture is my responsibility nobody should be held responsible for any of the word or sentence i have made second part is this as my i am indebted to your invitation and request for accepting uh, to deliver me this lecture you can communicate me on this whatsapp number throughout your life i love being in touch with teachers and student because you are the really one who are going to shape world and humanity so you are all questions are welcome only problem is with time i may not be free every time to answer you immediately some time answer may reach you by 8 hours 10 hours 24 hours in a week but do not call me just be in touch by the whatsapp message just as a formality i am handing over you some links where you can be in touch with me by whatsapp and other way you can get some participation certificate and you can give your own personal feedback on google about this lecture thank you thank you very much madam now you have been made host so you can now make others host and you can post your messages in chat box uh, questions in the chat box and you can continue and close the session as per your convenience thank you so much madam please continue Akshana, thank you, sir. It was truly an enlightening, mindful presentation that we all were lucky to have. I'm sure all of the curious minds gathered here has had wonderful takeaways from your talk by now. Now, in order to make the program more interactive and exciting, we have a Q and A session for the students. Anyone who has any queries or thoughts on the topic discussed can press in their questions through the chat box. in case you are not immediately ready with questions you can whatsapp me your questions and i will surely respond to you even any time you feel i need to come to kochi for meeting and interacting with a student i will come with my own money do not have to bother about anything i'll take leave from office and i will visit your place egas kerala is very beautiful place so students i have visited some time to kerala delivered lecture in every jnv of kerala with my own expenses and i every time i felt that not only uh, that particular uh, region but the people everything is very beautiful and very disciplined so meeting disciplined people is always wonderful sir what is the average i will just go through sir what is the average weight of the spaceship normally as you can see na this chandrayaan and all these are the systems which are launching the space probes there are certain man mission so depending on what is the intention of your space mission weight varies it can be in a few lakhs to lakhs up to 30 33 lakhs of kgs this is totally dependent on if suppose columbia discovery or apollo you are talking they range in the way weight of 20 to 30 lakhs kilogram you talk about uh, um, mom mars orbiter mission or chandrayaan they weigh in the range of few thousands okay and what total weight i am telling you is with this basically we are not talking about the uh, actual payload we are talking about the propulsion system which will have srb solid rocket booster which will have then liquid uh, other systems so this main thing is the total weight of the fuel and the other things actual payload is always lesser than few thousands okay okay and there is one more question which i missed so now the my one presentation part is gone now we'll not get into that i will get into Uh, what is that sir what is what is the dakshina can you read question for sir what uh, is yeah. that question uh, sir the question is uh, why is chandrayaan 3 a difficult mission as many people say it uh, say it is impossible for soft moon landing ah uh, really speaking see you are kids na ab thode young ho so probably you don't read too much about this topics because there is lot many things to be read about your own academics and that is good also first you should study your academic thoroughly then you could you should go for the general knowledge or specific interest of viewers really speaking chandrayaan 3 is a difficult mission because it is indigenous mission 
you have to understand one developing country with so much of diversity so much of the other problems is also trying to be among the few countries which are developed countries having capita per capita income in a lakhs of rupees do not have any much of the internal issues then competing with them is difficult but as such as far as the soft landing on moon is concerned there are countries which has done it now our part is that we are trying to reach the south pole normally you know the south pole landings are not so easy south poles are the coldest region of the celestial bodies in the solar system so that makes it difficult then now there are some other issues which we faced in the chandrayaan 2 so whole of the mindset is making it little worrisome but the results expected at this time are very good but really speaking i am not the one who is supposed to comment on this i am not connected to the isro that is isro or i am not connected to any of the space missions i am connected to the nuclear science and technology and normally i don't entertain questions on even nuclear science and technology because many of the parts are connected to the some classified or confidential information so today we will take only general questions though i have answered that question about the difficulty in chandrayaan 3 but much better data is available on the isro's website okay so now i can see some more questions i can read that okay so now is it true that august we will see a supernova or any intergalactic okay this is wonderful such questions i like why you know because these are general type of questions see betel gives is supposed to be supernova in upcoming 400 years because since last 400 years there is no supernova in our galaxy and galaxy are actually matlab probabilistic what you can say interpolation extrapolation of the database and knowledge human beings have gathered till date by the celestial events the betelgeuse is the very bright candidate for supernova so everybody is waiting for it some people say it's a cross finger that okay we will see something great because supernova suppose it happens in day time you will see betelgeuse at a magnitude of approximately 11 minus 11 so it's a quite like a moon when it is full it is approximately minus 12.7 so you can see the brightness that betelgeuse will match in a day time so it will be really beautiful things with lot of pros and cons which let's not discuss now but it is probability and you know probability what it means because it must be the topic for you in the mathematics so just expectations that we will see in our lifetime not necessarily we then probably future generations then there is something by the shreyas we will see supernova on 31st august which they say it is once in a light as <laughs> सुपर मून ओके ओके सॉरी सुपर सॉरी सुपर नोवा को मैंने सुपर नोवा से जोड़ दिया सुपर मून इज अ रेगुलर हैपनिंग यू नो अवर ऑर्बिट इज इलेप्टिकल इवन चंद्रयान थ्री दोज हुर स्टडिंग वेरी वेल यू कैन सी द पुटिंग इन टू द ऑर्बिट ऑफ मून और गेटिंग आउट ऑफ अर्थ ऑर्बिट द कंप्लीट ऑर्बिट इज इलेक्टिकल विथ वन एंड क्लोजर टू द अर्थ सर्फेस एंड लेटर डेट वन एंड क्लोजर टू द मून सर्फेस एंड अदर एंड इज लिटिल हावे so similarly when moon in earth's orbit comes closer that is approximately 3 lakhs 50 55000 km average distance is 3 lakhs 84 farther distance is 4 lakhs 10000 so 355 360 it it appears little bigger 16 17% and that is what we call super moon now exact day, day, date and time i don't remember shresh you can just search for the august celestial events and you will get the exact details these things are quite regular as far as the celestial happening around us or around the earth is concerned so uh, you can enjoy that but don't wait wait uh, waste much time in this instead study hard about your academics and study more on your maths or astronomy olympiads now abhinav is asking something in few light years like 10 20 and average how many stars would be present okay okay distance you are talking about so for your kind information the nearest star system that is called alpha centaurus it's called mitra mitra means friend that star is basically 4.36 light year so 4.25 is the abc a alpha a alpha centaurus b and c so c is 4.25 light years other two b a and b are 4.36 light year if you talk about 10 20 light years range how many stars may be present So they must be in the range of at least ten, twenty, two hundred. Again, the detailed data will be available on internet. You can put same question on internet, 
Nowadays, there is something else available for you kids to enjoy. That is chat GPT, AI based applications. They give you a lot of interactive information. But as we do not buy paid version, most of the time, data are not matching with the facts written on the internet. And sometimes, you know, the facts written on the internet are also spurious. Just handle this information with care. Do not be adamant on this data. And that is why even I'm answering you, I always use but if like words just to tell you that nothing is authentic unless until you verify by the scientific evidence. Like today's date, whatever I said in complete lecture can be is subjected to change depending on the latest information. Okay. So now let's get into the other question. How does Chandrayaan 3 make soft landing? Okay. You better read it on a ISRO's uh, site because it will be authentic information. And then will Betelgeuse go to supernova within few thousand years? Few thousand years, it is obvious. 100%. But few hundred years or few next decades is of important because probably Lakshmi Madam or uh, Sandhya Mohan Madam or your principal Madam or Santosh Takle is interested in seeing supernova in their lifetime. Aap log bhi hamse jada jayenge na? So probably you will be able to see, but I will not be able to see. So I hope that I should be able to see in my lifetime without much of the trouble to the humanity and Mother Earth. Because you may be knowing during supernova, there is a burst of gamma rays which moves. If that burst of gamma rays comes in the direction of any of the planet or star system, that star system may get vaporized or planet or something of that kind may happen because of the high energy associated with those events. So there are a lot of questions still pending. Because of the religious problems and restrictions, was our human thinking or human scientific development delayed or we would leave much more technologically advanced places? See, it's, uh, it's a good question. But see, Jaisuriya, you have to understand. See, religion and religious thinking has helped humanity a lot in a past era by keeping them together, by uh, what you can say, saving humanity from so many other facts like uh, natural calamities. I don't know how many of you watch uh, movies like that Mohan Zadaro related one movie was there. So it's a community binding which comes from the so many factors which we feel evil today in a country, developing countries. Those factors have kept the community in a binding state and that was essential for safety and security. Today's date, when we talk about the safety, security in terms of the nation, we all are Indian. We are not Hindus or Muslims or Christians or something like that. We all are Indian. So our religion is being Indian and our constitution is our religious book. At this level, when we have reached to this particular maturity and state of sovereignty, it is very important that we can always feel that religion may be hindrances to the total development. But then, we should not forget that religion makes us ethical. And that is why you see the people from the low, what you can say, villages and remote places are more truthful. You go to the northeast, there you will find that people are very clean minded people. Okay. They don't indulge you, or you uh, into the some spurious things or some misbehaving. That's only because they come from the remote location where they have a lot of impact and influence of the religious thinking, which is about ethical and value education. So these things go hand in hand. What is important is we should not believe superstitions. We should not unnecessarily fall prey to the anything which is incorrect and non-scientific. Okay, so let's go further. Sir, can you explain what rocket prop propulsion is? It has got many other proportions. Like say liquid fuel is there, then you need oxidizer. If it has got solid fuel, like SRV, solid rocket booster. This systems India has developed very well. But today's date, when we talk about Japanese, Japanese or Chinese or Russian or American technology, their propulsion system are too good. But our Mac 2 or Mac 3s are quite good and they take quite good load up to the 4000 kg payload. 4000 or 3800, that is the weight ranging of the Chandrayaan 2 and 3. So this is quite good uh, evolve or what you can say, uh, learning of Indian as a nation in terms of the technology of this particular propulsion system. Other details, obviously, you have to get from the net or from the authentic site of ISRO. Now, sir, what will be the average weight of satellite? Average weight of probe you're talking about, like suppose Chandrayaan 3, what it is doing. Detailed, systematic, where that 3,300 or 3,400 weight has been distributed. What is the uh, rover weight? What is the 
system which is taking it there everything is written so don't expect me to answer these questions which has got very detailed leaflet available on chandrayaan 3's detail uh, web page which is the nearest magnet magnet star magnet star what is that mostly stars have core before their death which turns hydrogen to the helium helium to the lithium and at the end of their life cycle it turns to the ion and then supernova happens so if you have ion cone obviously the way earth has got another thing everything is connected to the that specific field of magnetism okay and the pole system but then you want to know about some specific star the question has to be specific and uh, uh, there is limit to my knowledge also because it is my general knowledge it is not my office or specific knowledge where i work so i can just extend my apologies because i am not able to answer this question precisely is there any planet star except in a milky way that can support life this is uh, who is that i hope it's not getting delayed because questions are there so i thought that i will answer is it okay madam yes sir yes ah, it's okay. okay is there any planet star in a milky way as this is question which takes you to the, that particular alien and other things whether there is any uh, you all life in a or around earth or in a milky way or some other galaxy then that picture films like uh, hollywood films na men in black and all or species you must be watching so all these things they started from the 1960 oxma project then seti project search for extraterrestrial intelligence and then finally some 10 years back i think there is one probe called kepler kepler then kepler 1 2 now today's date there are some classification called goldinox zone habitable zone and in reference to that today's data is that there are thousands of planet in our suburbs as the distance closest one is 4.36 light year that do not have any habitable but beyond that kepler probe has founded uh, found you can go to the kepler probes official website you can find that day in and out that probe is finding some habitable planets which has got atmospheric condition similar to the earth so there may be chances that this particular systems may having some evolved life not reaching to the human stage or might have reached beyond human stage so we are not very clear because the distances are huge observations are not possible so they may be there but they are not contactable that is not statement by me that is the statement by some very well known scientist in the past era when they were having tea and discussing about the aliens it must be the discussion 40 years back today we are standing in a 2023 so chances of not only having but knowing and contacting them are little more which uh, is there any planet okay what can we do with moon or asteroid mining can it have big impact on india obviously these all missions have some very interesting intentions first thing is that when we talk about moon or when we talk about mars the gravitational influence is very less so probably making some intergalactic or interplanetary missions or launching some space probe from those places is quite easy saving on the fuel but that fuel and those particular minerals and other things will come from that particular uh, spe- uh, area only like moon or mars only so when we are talking about why we want to do this particular missions these are the basically foundation stone for the future missions so obviously when you say that this asteroid mining or moon mining will it have any impact on india why india it will have impact on human civilization this is essential but today's date we are not exact aware about what will be the impact and what will be the usage but in terms of the future vision surya drushti ta jisko bolte hai na in terms of the future vision it is essential sir can we use electricity or any other energy to sir uh, the sir, yes ma'am sir can we take the rest of the question uh, by mail shall we send it yes. to you yes madam that will be great okay uh, sir yeah. we would like to have you in cochin in person uh, yeah. and we'll plan some activity in connection with the space week in the month of october if it is comfortable for you yeah october i am busy so after october november december is possible because this is a year end so i can take four five days leave i can go and my one request if you don't mind i will discuss here only i, I will not come for one school only i would love to go around some remote schools where people understand not hindi but at least bit english 
so at least my presence will be useful to those people who do not get opportunity to interact with some people who love to interact okay so per day one two lectures and five days leave i will take i will come as per your convenience and then go around those places deliver some lectures meet your students personally that can be planned madam so be in touch with me okay you can arrange that also yes ma'am uh, we have seven schools under yeah. bhavan uh, kendra yes ji kendra then bhavan also we can arrange some sessions for you sir yes ma'am uh, yeah totally educative you tried your best to bring nationalism and values also thank yes, you very much sir thank you thank you madam sina over to you uh so before we conclude can we have a picture of uh, all of us so i request all of you to switch on the cameras so we can have a picture yes ma'am yes some dakshina yeah now i'm visible it's done with the ms it's done but ma'am most of the cameras are off okay <laughs> that's okay <laughs> Dakshina, yes, ma'am. Uh, Miss, uh, shall I continue? As we have come to the closure of the session, I invite Avantika Vinod for the vote of thanks. Honorable Chief Guest, Revered Principal, Vice Principal, Assistant Vice Principal, Teachers, and my dear friends, Namaste and good evening. I deem it a great honor and privilege to deliver the vote of thanks for this event. First and foremost, I would like to convey my sincere thanks to our honourable chief guest, senior scientist Dr. Sadosh Stakale, for not only sparing us his invaluable time to grace us with his presence, but also enlightening us with his commendable talk on the subject chosen. You have truly helped in inculcating a scientific temperament within us and encouraging us to think innovatively. We are indeed grateful to you, sir. We would like to extend a hearty thanks to our beloved principal, Shri K. Shreesh, Vice Principal Jyoti P. and assistant vice principal jyoti and my ep for their support and guidance i would like to thank all the teachers involved in organizing an event of this magnitude a big thanks to all the parents for their support class but not least i would like to thank all my big, all my friends present here for their time and active participation and for making this fun function the resounding success that it was thanking you all once again Thank you, thank you very much, madam. Uh, so, should I close the session? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And one link about participation certificate and feedback has been circulated. If you find it okay, you can.